Are you planning on going to the beach this summer? Maybe you plan to make sand sculptures or perhaps you are a fantastic surfer. But have you ever asked yourself how your favorite beach was created or why it has sand instead of rocky tide pools? Over 80% of the world's coastlines are lined with cliffs, not expanses of soft sand. There are two kinds of cliffs you'll encounter on these rocky shores shore platforms and plunging cliffs. Shore platforms are shaped like this and are caused by waves eroding the cliff. Plunging cliffs are created when the sea rises or the land lowers, covering any low-lying shelves or formations. Waves eroding cliff-lined shores can create some pretty cool formations, especially when natural faults, weak spots in the rock, give way. Some of these are caves, arches, stacks, blowholes, and narrow gorges. What about sandy beaches? The majority of sand is actually deposited by rivers as they meet the sea, rather than the waves beating at the shore. Sandy beaches are much more common in the tropics than at northern or southern latitudes. The majority of the sand is made of silicates, quartz and feldspar, the minerals that make up granite. In volcanic areas, eroded igneous rock can cause dark colored beaches, some even appearing black. There are two main kinds of sandy beaches, dissipative and reflective. Dissipative beaches are shallower, have finer grained sand, and usually occur in high energy environments, where waves average two and a half meters. The large waves are more effective eroders, and the fine grained sand allows less water to soak in, so the wave pulls more material back into the sea in its backwash, resulting in the shallow slope. Reflective beaches are steeper, have coarser grained sand, and generally have a lower energy environment, with smaller, less powerful waves. The waves are more readily absorbed by the coarse sand, and so do not pull as much back with them in the backwash, resulting in the steeper slope. The beach face is the area that undergoes some of the most active change. It's the bit of sand that's almost always wet, where this sand and the water meet. The berm forms at the top of the beach face, and except for in the case of very flat beaches, is visible as a well-defined crest of sand. Beyond this is the back beach. In the case of beaches with a large supply of sand and little vegetation, sand dunes can form, which are actually a very fragile habitat for a variety of creatures and plants. In the case of reflective beaches, there can be a sharp drop-off made of coarser sand where the backwash meets the incoming wave. This is called a step. Sandbars form when breaking waves move the sand beneath them, creating an uprising of sand separated from the shore by a trough. These move constantly as wave characteristics vary. Years later, when the sand is squished into rock, geologists can see the structure of age-old beaches and gather important clues about past habitats. Geologists also use the geologic record to determine where coastlines were in the past. Discontinuities, areas where there is a sudden change in the rock layer, tell geologists when the environment went through an important change. This includes the sudden appearance and then disappearance of sandstone, limestone, or coral reef remnants within the layers of rock. Such changes tell geologists where the coastlines were and how they changed over long periods of time. For example, the Holocene-Flandrian transgression is of particular interest to scientists because it was a rapid sea level rise that occurred approximately 12,000 years ago, during a warming period in which large glaciated regions were melting quickly. The geologic record shows that the sea rose at approximately 1 meter per century. This doesn't sound like much, but that means shorelines retreated inland as much as hundreds of meters per every one meter of sea level rise. Have any other questions about the world around you or beaches? Let us know in the comments. If you like what we do, consider subscribing to the channel.